Mubarak had done things which were unimaginable, uh, and, the, and the idea of him crushing his people was not something that we could possibly uh, support. Let me, let me step back and talk about what I think our mission has to be in the Middle East and even more broadly, because our purpose is to make sure the world is, more, is peaceful. We want a peaceful planet. We want people to be able to enjoy their lives and know they're going to have a bright and prosperous future and not be at war. That's our purpose. And the mantle of, of leadership for the, promoting the principles of peace has fallen to America. We didn't ask for it, but it's an honor that we have it. But for us to be able to promote those principles of peace requires us to be strong. And that begins with a strong economy here at home, and unfortunately, the economy is not stronger. When the, when the, uh, the president of, of, of Iraq, excuse me, of Iran, Ahmadinejad, says that our debt makes us not a great country, uh, that's a frightening thing. The, the former chief of, uh, chief of the uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff said that, uh, Admiral Mullen, said that our debt is the biggest national security threat we face. This, we have weakened our economy. We need a strong economy. We need to have, as well, a strong military. Our military is second to none in the world. We're blessed with terrific soldiers and extraordinary technology and intelligence. But the idea of a trillion dollars in cuts through sequestration and budget cuts to the military would change that. We need to have strong allies. Our association and, and connection with our allies is essential to America's strength. We're the, the great nation that has allies, 42 allies and friends around the world. And finally, we have to stand by our principles. And if we're strong in each of those things, American influence will grow, but unfortunately, in nowhere in the world is America's influence greater today than it was four years ago. All right. And that's because we become well, weaker think, uh, on each uh, of those four dimensions. Perfect. You're going to get a chance. Justice Party presidential candidate, uh, Rocky Anderson. Freedom and democracy mean to both of these candidates, President Obama and Mitt Romney, countries, governments doing what we want them to do. What you just heard could be said of any of the signatories to the Project for the New American Century plan, where these people, including Donald Rumsfeld and Wolfowitz and Dick Cheney and the like, all these neocons that helped lead us into this disaster in Iraq, they said basically that in the, this century, we, the United States, need to build up our military and become engaged everywhere we can to exercise and maintain our military and economic dominance. And it is time that that kind of thinking come to an end. And unfortunately, in the Republican and Democratic Party, that's where they both are. They may have different ways of doing it. They, there may be different degrees, small arms, large arms to Syria. But what they are talking about today in the most bloodless terms is equivalent to calling for an absolute bloodbath, a civil war in Syria. It is absolutely irresponsible, and we, the American people, need to finally say we won't put up with it anymore. We put up with it for too long under George Bush. We put up with it for way too long these last four years under Barack Obama, in large part because so many Democrats, instead of principle guiding their stand on these issues, it's become partisanship. And that's why I left the Democratic Party, and I'm glad I did, because I wouldn't want to be part of this party that is in collusion with Republicans in causing so much mayhem, so much death, so much tragedy around the world. And one other thing I need to mention, did you notice how it always comes down to Israel? They have to throw that out there. No two people could be more obsequious to Israel or APAC than President Barack Obama, who, who perpetrated, perpetuated the lie when he appeared before APAC about Ahmadinejad saying, which he never did, that Israel should be wiped off the map. And then Mitt Romney saying in one of the primary debates that he disagreed with one of his opponents and what he would do with regard to Israel and Palestinians is call his old friend Bibi Netanyahu and ask him, what should I do? This man running for President of the United States saying he'd call the Prime Minister of Israel and ask, what should I do? Neither of these men should be President of the United States. It's dangerous. We the people have to provide the leadership, and we can do this. No matter who's going to be the president, we need to take to the streets. We need to rise up in every way and say that we as a people will not allow our nation to engage in these outrages internationally anymore in our names.
Green Party presidential nominee, Jill Stein. Yes, absolutely. And by the same token, we need to say that we will no longer permit the violation of our constitutional rights here at home as well, which have been so badly violated not only by George Bush, but also by Barack Obama, who has embraced the policies of George Bush on so many fronts, who has codified the violations of our civil liberties by George Bush, and then even gone on to extend those violations to where uh, the president claims the right of indefinite detention to put us uh, at his pleasure into prison indefinitely without charge and without trial that the president has assumed the right of assassination, not only of foreign nationals, but of our own citizens as well. And it's time for us to say no to these unconstitutional wars, which are squandering our precious tax dollars, a trillion dollars every year and more, is what we are now spending on this bloated military industrial security complex, which is not making us more secure, but which is adding to the national debt, contributing to the violation of international law and incredible suffering and chaos around the world, and in fact also is the largest driver of climate change. The biggest source of greenhouse gases is also coming from the U.S. military. So on so many fronts, it is time to say no to these backwards policies, which are being promoted by Democrats and by Republicans alike. That is why I have not been ever a member of the Democratic or Republican Party. That's why the Green Party exists as a national party. We are on the ballot for 85% of voters, and we provide a way right now to say no to these ongoing wars for oil and to say yes to a foreign policy based on international law and human rights, and to move from this fight in wars for oil to a fight to stop the truly greatest threat that we are now facing, and that is the threat to climate. Let's go back to Bob.